I'm working on Romeo and nah, Juliet. Yeah, thank you very much. Was, I was, was just I supposed to, oh, you were going to, I don't that. know Perfect. what to do. Okay. Perfect. No, no, no. Am I skipping something, somebody who's a, more of an expert on my uh, history? Yeah. Your youth. Um, that's what I wanted to ask you about because that's a big thing coming up. I know. Uh, in July, July tell 4th. Me about it. You yeah. want to tell, tell us a little bit about it? It, uh, it opens July 4th at the gorgeous theater at Bard. This is Ro the Romeo and Juliet, Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet. Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet, which was recently discovered. I know everybody says that all the time, but it's really true. The original version of this piece, which he hadn't finished orchestrating because it was, it was prevented from being performed already, just on paper. They wouldn't allow it to happen for various reasons. So the Stalin-approved version that we're used to hearing, and you can see it in some of the theaters in New York, this piece discovered in some secret vault, you know, it's like, what, what was that, you know, uh, um, the vault that, uh, what's his name, opened? Rivera. Yeah, Geraldo Rivera, thank you, it's kind of like that, it's like a little Geraldo Rivera-ish. And uh, so Simon Morrison found the score, and um, so Bard College is, is responsible for putting it together, it's been realized, orchestrated, it was all, you know, it was all in piano and written out and we know from other evidence. So really like the orchestration relates more to the suites than the ballet, which is, has become very, very big. It's very cinematic, in fact. That's one thing I'm not wild about, the, the, the current uh, running uh, score of Romeo and Juliet. So it's different. It's, there's not a lot of new material, but it's reordered. There's some things that are in different places, some things that have been taken out because they were you know, Frankenstein in from other pieces of his. They had to put in the big variation for the sulky dancers. And some of the rhythms were too hard. So it's weirder. There's more, the textures are different. There's, it sounds different. There's more uh, saxophone clarinet. Um, there's, it's more percussion. It's weirder, it's smaller. It's less huge waves of string sound. And uh, they don't die. I was going to say, the ending is a little different, yeah. eh? And they don't die. <laughs> so when <laughs> Leon Botstein said, uh, um, asked me, said, oh, you're just who I want to talk to. I was there for some reason at Bard. He says, we found this score of Romeo and Juliet that's, you know, the original that's never been performed. I said, oh, sarcastically, believe it or not. I said, oh, the one with the happy ending? And he said, how did you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Because <laughs> I thought, what is more ludicrous than that? So, of course, um, <laughs> Prokofiev was working with this uh, nutty and brilliant theater director, Sergei Radlov, and he was rethinking Shakespeare. And, you know, Prokofiev is quoted as saying, dead people don't dance, <laughs> which is kind of great. But if you've seen the Macmillan, he spends a long time t swinging her corpse around. <laughs> it's like, wow. That, and, you know, she's a ballerina, but it gets heavy after a while. <laughs> a um, dead weight, I guess. It's like, oh, but come on. Respond. I can't. I'm dead. Okay. So um, <laughs> they, they live forever. And the, the last act of this ballet isn't scripted. You know, there's a very detailed libretto. Uh, what happens here? You know, the, this person gets killed. A lot of people get killed, except Romeo and Juliet. So she wakes up from the poison. His hand is stayed by Friar. Oh, that was, I just made that up. His hand is stayed by Friar Lawrence so he won't kill himself. And they're like, wow, let's get out of here, and they go someplace and do a gorgeous dance for all eternity. And everyone, I haven't solved this problem. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but, you know, I'm working my way up to it. Um, so it's going to be at least fascinating, if not gorgeous, which it probably <laughs> will be. But I'm working on it right now. I've also never seen a production of Romeo and Juliet that isn't done by a classical ballet company. So if this is my company, and... Another interesting thing is that, like I've said anything interesting, an, interest, an interesting thing is that Romeo and Juliet is male heavy. Uh, I think maybe because there weren't any ladies acting in the theater, so all the ladies are played by young, beardless youth. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of male characters in this show. Uh, you know, I've reinstated Rosaline, for example, um, but I have some women playing men's parts. Uh, so my Tybalt and my, um, what's his name, Mercutio, are both women. Huh. And they're scary. <laughs> they're like the most consistently butch dancers. Now, in rehearsal, they come, they're like this all the time. Like, 
they're, it's, they're full of dirty sexual innuendo jokes. They've yeah. become honorary, like irritating straight men is what they are. <laughs> and they're, it's fantastic. So it's, that's the scariest part. I'm choreographing a duel with them. They're sword fighting. It's like, yeah, you, gal, you gals are scaring me. It's really great. So it's super convincing. And it's not balletic. You know, it's pre-classic. It's really rough. And yeah. so I have a lot done, and it's gorgeous. I just came from there, so my head is still full of that. It, what's the production like? Is it, where is it set? I mean, what time period? What it's kind of costumes? It's set or? in about, let's say it's in the uh, 1400s. And it's, let's say that it's in Verona. Yeah. That sounds maybe familiar, but doesn't sound like Mark Morris. Really? Huh.